Welcome to the Couple on Fire podcast. Uh, we're going to continue talking about mental health awareness because that is this month. And on mm-hmm. this episode, we're going to talk about anxiety and panic attacks. And that's coming up right now. Right now. Are you a Christian and you are looking to take your faith, your family, and your future to the next level? Then this is the channel for you. All right, welcome to today's episode. I am your host, Josh, and I'm here with my beautiful wife, Christy. Hi. (laughs) And, uh, you know, this is a real powerful month. We're really excited, actually, to share each and individual week uh, about mental health awareness and about all these incredible topics, especially right now during quarantine time when all this stuff is just imperative. So what we're going to ask right now, if you don't mind, maybe you can hit the share button right now to make sure that it shares out this episode and people that need to see it now have an opportunity to do that. Because that's the way that it works on Facebook uh, is by sharing is the only way really that other people are going to be able to see it. Because if you share it, that's showing Facebook that you actually care about what you're watching. So yeah. So anyway, so on today's episode, we're going to talk about anxiety and panic attacks. And Christy and I have actually a lot of experience uh, in this uh, area, so we we want to kick it right off today. The very, very first thing we're going to talk about is recognize the signs and the triggers. That's the very first thing. And I actually have something I want to show you that I found online that I think is really incredible when it comes to anxiety disorders. And then I want to share a little bit about those triggers. But first off, anxiety disorders affect 40 million adults in the U.S., For many people, symptoms begin to develop before they are even 21 years old. And a lot of people, to be honest with you, don't even realize they suffer with anxiety. They think there's something seriously wrong with them. And anxiety doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. There's a way to to really uh, prevent it and make it uh, manageable in your life. And that's really what today's episode is about. But this is really shocking. Most common causes of workplace disability, that's from anxiety. And that, to me, is just scary. You know, people are missing work uh, daily because of that. So yeah, I want to show you this next thing right here. Let me do that. So panic attacks uh, and anxiety actually have symptoms. So if we know what the symptoms are and we know what the triggers are, we know how to control it that much better. So these are a few things on this this picture that I found today. It actually says feelings of dread, dizziness, muscle tension, sweating and chills, uh, chest pain, heart palpitations, increased blood pressure, nausea, upset stomach, tremors or tingling, numbness, body weakness, difficulty breathing. I mean, if you've experienced any of this stuff, uh, you actually feel like you're dying. And that's the reality. It says most people that experience a panic attack, uh, you know, derived from severe anxiety, it actually makes you feel like like you're dying. Yeah. And the, the two most common symptoms that I have, you don't have to suffer with all of them, but I... It's- yeah. Panic attacks and anxiety is something that I still work through in my life on a pretty regular basis, I would say, once or twice every two to three months. Um, And it's important. I usually get heart palpitations or I get like chest pains, chest tightness is what I feel like, like an elephant is sitting on my chest. Mm. So those are some of the things that I experience. And what I have found is um, some of my triggers, what I've really realized are is that I have a what I feel is a super long to do to do list. And once you start getting your trigger, the smallest little thing starts feeling like it's the straw that broke the camel's back. Mm. So if you have a lot that's going on at work, a lot that's going on in your personal life, then all of a sudden your brain starts racing and you start adding up. I have to do the laundry. I have to do the dishes. I need to check the mail. I got to take the garbage out. And then every little thing starts to become much bigger than what it really is. So what has really helped me is realizing when I start feeling that way is, all right, I need to sit and I need to make a list. So I Mm. make a list of everything that I need to get done, what the deadline is for each thing and how long I have to accomplish it. And it makes me feel like then I have it controlled. So I don't need to be overwhelmed. I have a plan. So yeah, you found a way because you understand what triggers it. You've, you've been able to develop a plan to prevent it from keep happening. Right. You know, and I think that's the thing, that's the whole idea of anxiety and panic attacks is 
they actually specific things bring those on. They just don't happen randomly, even though it feels random. Yeah, they're not random. They actually have their own set triggers and they have things that you can say, you know what? I'm actually experiencing a panic attack right now. So, I mean, I know you could probably share at least a couple stories right now that happened just recently when it comes to panic attacks. Yeah, I just had one um, Saturday. So I had to go to um, worship band practice Saturday morning and I had had a long week at work and I didn't realize, start realizing what my onset is until, you know, you and I, you started helping me point out, like, I don't even realize at first what it is. And then all of a sudden I I realize I'm hot. I'm starting Mm. to like shake a lot. I'm twitching my leg. And then I start feeling like, like I need to leave all of a sudden. At first I didn't even recognize what it was. And then I realized like, oh, it's starting right now. So I need to not say, I don't know what's happening. I know what's happening and I need to leave that area and go outside. And because you have to talk yourself through it too. Like if I start saying, oh my gosh, when I get home, I still need to, you know, mow the lawn or take the garbage out. I can start saying to myself, if I don't take the garbage out, it's not that big a deal. The world's not going to end, you know? So I have to like talk myself through it. Yeah. Not worry about it in the moment. Yeah. And I think that's common. Like it yeah. triggers one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. It's to like the a next. waterfall. It is. It's like a, it's like a runaway train really is what ends yes. up happening. Yeah. And it will derail completely. And it feels like you don't have any control because that's what panic does to us. It puts us in a position where we are completely out of control of our emotions and our thoughts in the time. So, and it feels like I can't leave right now and I don't know what to do. Yeah. And then I found that if you start getting your body in motion, like you go and you leave and you, you're going outside or you go somewhere else and you, you know, just start calming yourself down, but realizing what the triggers are. And a lot of times it's when I'm in the middle of something, I'm usually, I'm usually not at home. You know, for me, you know, I'm usually out in public somewhere and I'm usually around other people, either people that I know or people that I don't know in a store or um, at worship band practice. And all of a sudden I start feeling like I have all these obligations or responsibilities. And I don't realize that at first, like I really had to be self-aware and start. What was I just thinking about when this started happening? I have to rewind and like back into it. So then I can recognize not to prevent them from happening necessarily, but to recognize when it's coming. Yeah. I realized years ago that, you know, I remember opening up and saying something, this was 15 years ago, I'd say. And I remember opening up to my mom one time and I said, you know, I was driving and I had a panic attack and my mom looked at me and she's like, you had a panic attack. And that's the thing is anybody is susceptible to having panic attacks. And to be honest with you, I struggle largely with driving on the highway because I convince myself that I have to be completely busy. And that's a mindset. I trick my mind in thinking that if I'm, if I'm city driving, I'm perfectly fine. But if I'm on the highway, my anxiety starts to go out of the roof. My hands start to sweat. I start doing these things and I feel these things coming on. And I'm thinking I'm sabotaging myself because we really are. I mean, that's what anxiety does to us. We'll, we, we just sabotage ourselves in the way that we think. But if we know the triggers, if we know what's happening in the moment, we can say, okay, right. What's happening right now is not real. Like I've convinced myself it's real and I've convinced myself this is an uncontrollable situation, but there, and there's grounding techniques. There's all, and we've talked about that on previous episodes. I mean, there's all these things you can do, but the idea is, is try and get ahead of it. And that's what this episode's about. How do we get ahead of anxiety and how do we get ahead of a panic attacks? And, and over the years it's gotten better. I mean, it has gotten better. And you and I are exact opposite when it comes to that. Yeah. So when I'm driving on the, I prefer to drive in the expressway. It's like, a straight shot, same <laughs> speed. It's like, ah, yeah. you know, but then you get into where there's stop and go traffic and there's stoplights and there's stop signs. You have to stop. You have to go. You have to stop. You have to go. I'm like, ah. like, I do not like that at all. Yeah. I'd rather be an indie car driver than, <laughs> yeah, than go cross country. I don't know. It's, it seems strange, but that's true. Okay. So number two, number two is what we call the in and out theory. Why don't you explain that? Yes. So this is so powerful. Like when I started realizing the small, small compromises in life, that small changes that make a difference in your thought pattern. So 
It's what you read. It's what you watch. And it's what you listen to. What goes in your mind is what feeds your mind. And a lot of people don't realize like a lot of um, successful thought leaders are saying you shouldn't even uh, read or I mean not read, but be watching TV before you go to sleep or you shouldn't wake right up and should be checking your social media or checking your emails for your mental health. And then also, like, what type of music are you listening to? Are you listening to music that's constantly talking about drinking or being depressed or your dog dying or something like that? It makes a huge difference in what you're listening to. If you're watching TV programs that are mostly horror films, you know, where people are dying and things like that makes a huge difference. And you don't realize it because it gets processed into your subconscious mind and your brain and it controls your thoughts. So when you start being aware of those small little things that you do. I switched what type of music I listen to. So I listen to constant positive and uplifting music. And I switched to reading more motivational quotes and getting a motivational app that texts me throughout the day, Mm -hmm. listening to motivational things on the way to work, um, making sure I'm not checking my uh, social media first thing in the morning, especially right now. It's just filled with negativity. Oh. I don't watch the news. You can do tons of research and a lot of thought leaders in this day and age. They do not watch the news. A lot of them don't even watch TV. So it's very important to be aware of what you're allowing to go in your ears. Even if you're subjecting yourself to gossip at work or, or jokes that are inappropriate, it goes in your mind and it is so important to protect it. Like the COVID-19 mask. I saw a meme today <laughs> to put the mask over your ears. Yeah. Cause you have to control what's in because what goes in is really what's just going to come out. It's and so important, it, way more important than you realize. It is because anxiety and okay. So the effects of anxiety and panic can be physical. It can be visceral. Like you can, but yeah. The onset of it comes from your mind and your emotions. So if you want to help prevent anxiety, you want to prevent panic attacks, you have to make sure that your mind and your emotions have the best chance possible uh, for the output to be the way that you desire it to be. And that is exactly what Christy talks about. You have to make sure your input mm. daily and you have to be purposeful. Like guard, like guard you, yourself. Like you do, like you have to be on purpose. You can't just say, I'm going to get lost up in whatever it is that I do on a day-to-day basis and just go numb and forget about it. Like you can't do that. You have to say, I have to be intentional today. Yeah, am I going to listen to a book that's positive and uplifting? Or am I going to keep reading and listening to, like you said, horror books. I mean, murder mysteries are awesome. And, and I fun. love them. Yeah. No, they are like yeah. and even TV programming. Murder, that's yeah. great. I'm not saying don't do that stuff. But what yeah. I'm saying, if you're, if you see that you're suffering largely from panic attacks and anxiety, maybe you need to take it back. Maybe you need to supplement that with more positive material that's uplifting and encouraging to your mind and to your emotions. And so then, you know, the output can change. And they tell you like simple things, even physically like caffeine. Yeah. You know, caffeine can make a huge difference. And I know, hey, you know, every American, I swear anymore, if you're over the age of 21, you're addicted to caffeine. If you're not drinking monster drinks or, you know, coffee, you're addicted to something. But that really is a huge trigger. That can be a big thing. So know what goes in is exactly what's going to come out. Well, a huge thing for me, too, is realizing that what we do consistently is what matters, right? So it needs to be like I visualize one of them scales, you know, that you put stuff and it waits like this. So if you're primarily doing positive things all the time and the scale is more tipped this way for positive, the other things aren't going to matter. You have to outweigh it. You know, it's not even a balance. It shouldn't be even. It should be outweighing. You should be consistently doing positive things, listening to positive things. And you can do a lot of research, negative thoughts, anxiety, those types of things can cause you to get physically ill. You will be sick you will be achy you and you won't know why. And a lot of it is our thoughts. There's so much research. I wish I would have looked that up so we could have list references. Okay. (laughs) Well, so, so Christy and I mentioned a book before on another episode uh, by Les Brown (sighs) and Les Brown is, you know, deemed as a motivational speaker, but more than motivational, 
He mm-hmm. is transformational in his own life. Yeah. So, you know, he was a poor, poor child. He was adopted. He was severely abused, adopted into a family, uh, you know, grew up with a family of like eight children mm-hmm. and, you know, didn't have a chance in the world. He was, you know, deemed to be, uh, you know, mentally handicapped at learning disability when mm-hmm. he was in school, told he was never amount to anything. But what he decided to do, he was like, listen, I'm just going to try and memorize all the positive quotes. And this man can rip off positive quotes. Zig Ziglar. Yeah. Like I mean, he can rip it off like it's a machine gun. Yeah. Like he knows. But what it did is it internally changed the way that yeah. he thought. And that's why they say rewired you, his you know, brain. Yeah, that's why they say read a Bible verse a day. That's why they say a lot of these things. So, you know, it's so you have armor inside of your mind and ready to go. Yeah. So you're ready on output. You know, your output is just that way. So we believe in reading books, like all the books that we have on the bookshelves. And I know you guys probably can't see most of them. You probably can't. But we, we really believe in consuming books and not just empty books, but books that are really going to uplift mm. you. Even if it feels redundant, you would be surprised when you listen to the same book the third time. Oh, yeah. The third time you get so much value out of it. And it's because your mind is it needs it. It desires it. So you know that in and that out theory, it's just true. And it's the same thing with calories. I mean, we talk about calories in, calories out. I mean, you can't just go and consume as many calories as you want and expect to be in top physical condition. It just doesn't work like that. Mm. So remember that the in and the out, it's going to control your panic and it'll control your anxiety if you treat it right. I heard um, you and I had went to a conference and I had, I always like it when I hear something new because a lot of positive and thought leaders, they do talk about the same things. Like we're even talking about you have to be aware of your thoughts, yeah. things like that. A lot of people regurgitate those things. I always like to hear a little bit different stuff. And there was um, a conference that you and I went to and the speaker was like, for different specific things, he likes to have, what do you call them things with arrows? He's oh, like, quiver. quiver. Quiver, yeah. He's like, I always have, I like to have like four, five to 10 specific arrows in my quiver yeah. specifically about that specific topic. So if someone wants to talk to me about motivation, I have memorized yeah. eight to 10 things for myself. And he would act like he's shooting, you know? There's my quiver. There's my arrow, you know, and it was really cool because I had never heard someone and I visualized that and visualization is so that's why we've talked about a vision board, right? Visualization is so important, especially with mental health. It's so important to be able to visualize yourself succeeding, visualizing yourself healthy, visualizing yourself like powerful and empowered. And I am I can do this type of thing. Self-talk. And it's typical adults. Okay, so we're in a room. I remember this conference very well. It was in Colorado. I remember it. And we sat in this conference room and it was packed like that room was packed with that guy. Right. And he mentioned that he had this quiver and all these things that he could do. And of course, leave it up to one person in the room to try and challenge him on. Yeah. And I tell you what, I get goosebumps right now. Because he brought the guy brought up a person challenged him on a topic that wasn't part of the speaking point. That's exactly right. And he stood there for a second and it took him off guard. But he collected himself and he pulled out the arrow and he went to town. So he wasn't just saying that he did it. Yeah. You can tell he does it. Yeah. And that is impressive to me. You can tell he went through the Rolodex in his mind. He did. The person said that and he's like, Brrr. yeah. Okay. And he's like, yep. You know, and you was- can tell he was shocked for just a second. And then he was like, that kicked in. Yeah. And that reminded me of Les Brown. That's yeah. what a Les Brown does. Les Brown does. is so good. He is good. So um, good. Real quick, I want to share uh, something that Sean just said here on the screen. Okay. I want to add it. Also, it's important who you keep in your circle. If you have negative people around you, so it true. can draw you into that negative state. So true. Sean, this is so true, buddy, because this is this is what we always say. It's easier to pull someone down than it is to pull someone up. Mm-hmm. And it's so true. Like community, when it comes uh, to controlling like your thoughts and things, your community has such a massive impact on you and you have an impact on your community. So, you know, having a a solid circle of people that are around you to help you in time of anxiety. And we're actually going to talk about this part of our challenge tonight um, about your anxiety and your panic attacks. But you are right on when it comes to Who you let in your tribe. That's it's true. what your circle of influence. It's it's really, really what it is. Yeah. Um, it even comes to Josh and I were talking about earlier, you know, someone recently, I, know, I say recently, a couple months ago, 
was like, I always think it's important to be the smartest person in the room. And I'm like, yeah. that is so wrong. Like, that means that you don't want to be learning something new. I never want to be the smartest person in the room ever, you know, because that means I always have something to learn from someone else that I'm with. So, yeah, it's good to have knowledge, but you never want to be the smartest person in the room. No. And that's really and that is the difference between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. Ooh, and I'm listening to that right now, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. All right, let's move on. Number three, number three. It is slow down. Slow yes. Down. And that is key. <laughs> and if Josh, he's laughing because he can see it coming from a mile away. If we have two weeks in a row where I, we are, which right now we're in quarantine. So this has been great because I, it's been great. It's been slow. <laughs> it's been slow. <laughs> Normally we have, I am not even joking. Like we have stuff every night of the week. We're both in school. So, and then, you know, we're, uh, we are part of celebrate recovery with our church and we're both heavily involved in our church. And then we do life, we're life group leaders. So we get with people on our and work and we work. <laughs> and so, and then on top of that, you know, we have tons of nieces and nephews and there's constantly birthday parties to be going to or graduations mm. or something like that. All the time we have stuff going on. And I've just said, you know, this has been great to not feel like I'm obligated to have to go do something and feel bad because I don't want to go or feel bad because I don't go, you know? And so that's been great. But if we have two weeks in a row, where it's nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. And I don't have a day where I don't leave the house. Like I need a day where I don't leave the house. Yeah. Then um, I start to go downhill like two weekends in a row, like two weeks. And then that Monday it starts. And I'm usually like um, over the top happy, like, like, Oh, I can do this. Ah. And then it slowly just deteriorates from there and then by friday i'm like <sighs> yeah it's like a red bull crash <laughs> yeah it is. and uh i need a day and that's okay i t tell myself the thoughts that go through my head i'm going to be completely transparent right now with that is that he can go 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 all the time and i feel like if he can do it i should be able to do it we both have mm. the same goals in our life we both want the same things. We both want to help people. We won't both want to be thought leaders. We both want to be used by God to the best of our abilities, what he wants us for. And I really feel like if God wants me to do this, I shouldn't be so tired. I should be able to do it. God is my strength. You know, like I should be able to just go, go, go. And I can't do that. And self-acceptance is huge. And that goes into the anxiety and the panic attacks, like if I keep telling myself, I can, I just have to put my head down. I just have to barrel through. For me, for personally, for Christy, that's not true. I need a day to be able to collect myself, yeah. be an introvert and not have to be out giving of myself because I have to fill myself back up to be able to pour into other people. I can't keep pouring into other people if I'm empty. Yeah, I've heard something said many times in many ways, but basically even even the world's greatest racehorses have to rest. It's, mm -hmm. we put a weird amount of expectation on ourselves because yes. we live by the Joneses. We got to keep up with the Joneses. We got to keep up with our spouses. And I we live, have, I live with a very well, good racehorse right here. Yeah. But I can tell you what right now I suffer greatly because of it though, too. Like there's a lot of downfall for me in certain parts of my, my life because my mind doesn't shut off yeah. and that's not good. So I have to be very intentional. You know, there's a couple things per day that I, that you, you really, sh not that, not that you should, should just be doing them, but you really need to do them for yourself. And there's two things and you can implement it any way you want. Number one, you need to be praying per day. And I don't mean as you're driving in the car with your eyes open, do that too. But that's not what I'm talking about. Mm. I'm talking about taking private time and taking your time mm. and slowing down, closing your eyes mm. and having a conversation with God. Slow it down and be intentional with meditation. Meditate on thoughts. I'm not saying sit and go, oh, okay, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about meditating and thinking on great things, your future, where you want it to be, the things you're thankful for. Take the time per day to slow down. Me, I can 
I'm like the micro machine when it comes to talking. If I get a thought in my mind, it's good. I'm going to go bananas on the speed that I go. And that's not good because then I get a fumble and I mess up and all this stuff. And I have to be intentional at slowing down. It's hard for me. So two things. One thing that helped me with the whole meditation thing is that I heard a speaker or a preacher someone say, if you worry, that's meditating on your problems Mm -hmm. and you. So if you know how to worry, you know how to meditate and you just need to switch how, how you're thinking or how you're processing that. So that was one thing. And the other thing, what you just said about slowing down and praying. So I have, I have found a lot of people are one or the, well, three things, either they don't pray or talk to God at all. Or they get up in the morning and they pray in the morning. They may pray before a meal and they may pray before they go to bed. But then throughout the day, they're on autopilot. They don't think about God. They're not talking to God or anything else. Then there's the people that are throughout their day. They're just like, oh, thank thank you, God, for supplying that or thank you. And they're talking to him, but they're really not taking quiet time to slow down, quiet their mind and have the time for the Holy Spirit to really talk to them too. So it's very important to have balance. It's very important. It is interesting. (laughs) Um, It's very important to have balance though. Like you need to have a quiet prayer time and you also need to get in the habit of talking to God throughout the day because he centers you Mm. and the Holy Spirit will bring things up to your mind that need to come up in the proper time. And I had said that to someone a little while ago. Um, They had a friend that passed away and um, they were really suffering with a lot of guilt because they felt like they should have reached out to them more. And they felt like, you know, and I said, you know what I have found? I have found that if I was praying as like I should to God and I was um, asking him to use me in the areas that he wanted me to be used. I have always found that the Holy Spirit will bring to my mind at times when it's needed. And when he brings it to my mind, I need to act on it. I need to text that person or call that person at that time. So if that happened, you did it perfect in God's timing. You don't need to suffer with guilt. And if you were you praying everything like you said that you were, then you don't need to suffer with guilt. Yeah, and it I mean and it's no it's no doubt about that. We can get way ahead of ourselves yeah. and that causes major amounts of anxiety because yeah. a lot of things can happen. Number one, and I I know this for me, okay? Mm. It causes misstructure. Christy and I have had some really deep conversations lately because my strong suit is not structure, but that's because I don't slow down long enough. I think that I can just do everything and I can just do everything whenever I can. And that's just not the way it works. And it, and it distorts our expectations of ourselves and it causes us to be anxious. Now I'm anxious about getting up because I'm like, oh my gosh, I have a thousand things to do today. It's because I misstructured myself and we need to slow down mm. and organize ourselves. It gives us an opportunity to organize our thoughts, mm organize our feelings, you know, it really does give us some great time. And like she said, it recenters ourselves when we are talking to God throughout the day because we're slowing down. We have to be intentional. All these things are preventative things. These are things that we need to start doing on a daily basis to make sure that the anxiety and the panic that we do deal with doesn't happen in a month from now or three months from now. That's the way these things are designed to work. And we have to use them. And like anything in our lives, if we don't do them consistently, we can't get consistent results. Mm. So we got to make sure that we're applying these tips and things in our lives, these Christian life hacks, as we like to call them, Christy loves that phrase. I do. <laughs> but, you know, we have to apply those. We have to put those daily into our routines and stuff. So we can't say, you know what? I really suffer today and I tried really hard this morning and it didn't take care of it. No, it may not have. But consistently over time, guarantee these things will work in reducing your levels of anxiety and reduce your panic attacks. They're designed to work. Yeah. One of my mm-hmm. biggest things is that I hate, you know how we all have pet peeves. We do. So... Um, I only have one, so I'm kidding. Um, (laughs) right. I don't like it when I hear people say I'm on the struggle bus, I'm on the struggle bus, I'm on the struggle bus. And I'm like, the thankful train is in town and they're here picking people up off the struggle bus. Okay. So I like to say that only because you, it's self-talk. Like I'm serious. Like I do it sometimes if I sit and I'm like, I'm having such a bad day. I'm having such a bad day. I'm having such a bad day. I'm telling myself I'm having a bad day. But if I start saying like, man, I'm really struggling today 
and tomorrow's going to be so much better. And then I start thinking about what do I have going great in my life right now, though? What do I have that's really good? I'm not overlooking my problems or my anxiety at the time, but I'm not going to worry, which is meditating on the problem. I'm going to think positively about the things that's good or stop and pray because the Holy Spirit will change your mind and change your heart about it. You don't have to worry about doing that for yourself. If you start focusing on God and praying and saying Bible verses and things like that, you will find all of a sudden, 20 minutes later, you're like, oh, I'm not even thinking about that anymore. And that's not you. That's God that does that. Yeah. I like I but struggle bus. So you're not on the struggle bus. You're the driver of the struggle bus. You can choose to get off this thing at any time you want. Yeah. Yeah. I love that thing. That's fine. Okay. So the last thing, a, a real quick, a bonus thing. Okay. And I think this is really important for everyone to know. Sean kind of alluded to it in his first comment that he made. You're not alone. No. Okay. Yeah. So many people deal with anxiety. So many people deal with panic attacks. Men, you're not alone in this. It yeah. happens. You're not alone. You need to find somebody. You need to find a community. Just like Sean said, we got to find a community, a tribe of people that we're comfortable with. Yeah. What do you say all the time? About what? About yourself. About men. What, and what, you say Because we're too prideful and we won't No, you help? say, I'm not the rock. He's the rock. Yeah. And Josh says that all the time. Like men really want to be the rock and feel and they're raised to be that way. Like you guys are raised that you have to be like these rocks, these unemotional, unfeeling, unwavering, consistent, stable person. And that doesn't always mean that you can't feel and yeah. that you're not going to be struggling with human feelings that God gave you. So I love that you said that. You say it all the time. Like, you, I'm not the rock. He's the rock. I need to lean into him and then he'll give me the strength. Yeah, real men have feelings and that's the truth. It's mm -hmm. And it's not easy from a man's standpoint. I'm 44 years old, Ooh. which is old. <laughs> and I, So I was raised in an era, though, where men have really hairy chests and I do not. Uh. And, you know, and but they, you know, they beat their chests and, you know, they're, uh, you know, I'm a man, uh, right? Tim, the tool man. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, and that's the way we were raised. We really were. So we become very insecure when it's, you know, when we talk about anxiety and panic attacks, we, you know, those are um, soft things. Those are things that, yeah. you know, don't, men don't Weak. suffer with. <laughs> yeah. And it's not true. Right. So men, women, you're not alone. That leads us in today's challenge. Okay, there is tons of Facebook support groups, and I want to show you how easy it is to find that. Okay, because yeah. today I hopped on and I pulled it up, and I want to show you. So, the first one that I found right here is if you go into the search bar, you type in anxiety support, and you hit groups. This is just one I pulled right up 147,000 members. 147,000. And there's more than just this one. Members. And there's more than just this one. It's just one that I pulled up. And then um, then there was this right here that I pulled up too panic attack support groups. Look at 12,000 members. And that's just one. Mm. That's just one. So, you know, for us to, to find support, just like Sean said, just like we like to say, yeah. it's really important that we find groups of people to lean into healthy groups of people that struggle what we struggle with, that that are leaning on each other for support. OK, use the tips given. Find yourself in consistency, but then also find yourself a group to belong to. It's important. Yeah, I think it's. The, I'm so glad that he brought that up because that is really important. Like you can try to be as positive if, as you want. And the truth of the matter is, is that it's easier. Like I always get the visualization now when Josh talks about it. If you're standing up on a stool, it's easier and you're reaching down to help someone. It's easier for them to pull you off the stool than yeah. it is for you to pull them up. Yeah. And that's the way that it is for positivity and negativity, you know, and that's why where that saying came, if you dance with the devil, the devil's going to win because people that's pride. And then people think I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. And that's not true. You have to be surrounded by people that um, are going to be supporting you have the same, goals as you and is going to be encouraging you because you're gonna you're gonna suffer with depression you're gonna get like feel like you're not going as fast as you should go and you need those people that are going to be there to remind you why you started why you need to keep going why it's so important to stay positive you need that around you yeah and remember that anxiety and panic attacks is not your problem our choices are our problem. Mm. And that's the truth. A lot of times we don't want to take responsibility for the things that happen in our lives. 
But the more responsible we become about our actions, the in and outs, the things that we handle on a day-to-day basis, the way that we handle our prevention, the better we can take our family, our faith, and our future to the next level. And you have that opportunity if you're willing to take action today. So we just want to let you know, like and follow us. We're here live every single Tuesday at 7 p.m. Uh, if you find any kind of value in any of these shows, please share it. Share it on Facebook for us, please, if you could. It helps us reach more people. Yeah. And what do we like to say? Subscribe to the tribe. Yeah. Subscribe to the tribe. <laughs> Courage and Christian life hacks. <laughs> She's so funny. Hey, we'll see you guys next week. Bye.